Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, for all your blessings, for the time that we have together each morning to open up your word and to receive light um, for the day, and for the time that we are in. Uh, we pray for each person who's been studying these things. We ask that your Holy Spirit can work through them, can speak to them, and that we can reflect your character to all around us. We ask, Lord, that as we uh, look at Judges 6, 7, and 8, the story of Gideon, that you can help us to understand and remember the things that we studied in the past, to correct us of any error, and um, to give us light uh, and clear understanding so that we can present these things to others. Be with us now through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so yesterday, uh, good morning, everyone. So yesterday we had started uh, looking at the story of Gideon, Judges 6, 7, and 8. And um, we were directed you back to studies number 220, where um, we had... Uh, it's around the time that we began looking at um, <coughs> the <clears throat> putting them on a line, or not putting them on a line. This actually would be uh, adding the way marks uh, when we went through the story of Gideon. And we're supposed to be moving through a little bit quicker this last time, but we seem to got bogged down in some of the things that we had looked at in Judges chapter 5, but Judges chapter 5, we hadn't really put on a line before. So this we have, and uh, we're just going to read over it quickly and bring some things to your attention. So remember, when we, we looked at this, we had uh, basically five different lines. We had a line for chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8, and then a line for... Um, uh, Gideon and a uh, line for, um, I just can't think of the, yeah, Jeroboam, right? So Jeroboam, which is just Gideon, but we had a line for that as well as these other three lines. And when we had looked at six, seven, and eight, uh, we had only drawn out the way marks for Judges six. We didn't, we didn't, um, mark it out specifically for seven and eight. So we're going to have to look at that and figure out why we did that. I think because we decided uh, to do the other two lines, Jeroboam and Gideon. Um, but for chapter six, we did draw, you know, a period of darkness, time at the end, etc. But we're going to flesh this out a little bit more. Now, <clears throat> so we're going to, read this here. <clears throat> uh, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. So this seven years, um, we end up marking as, as an entire line. That seven years ends up being um, uh, this, this period of time. So We'll have to look at that again and how we did that. Um, can't remember now. But anyway, we have this seven years here. So that's a significant symbol. And the land of Midian greatly, or, or the land, the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel made them the dens uh, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. So what does it mean when they had sown? They had chosen a path. Well, just when we think about sowing. In the context of God's word, what is that? 
planting. Casting out the seeds. Yeah, so planting seeds, right? So we're we're sharing the message. I can't see here. Can you clean those, please? <clears throat> yeah. I don't know where the cloth is. Yeah, so they're planting seeds, and um, and the Midianites, this is strife, right? So the Midianites are our message of strife. Uh, the Midianites are going to come up and gather that it, that is sown. Yeah. So, so what does that mean in the context of this movement? What's this period of darkness describing? Isn't it a zoom in to the issues that we've seen that came because of uh, Parmenter and tests? Okay. Um, yeah. So we could say that it's dealing with Parmenter and tests. I think it's even more than that. I mean, if you look at what had happened, because this is about strife, this is about something internal. And, and this movement was not able to grow. Right. It it seemed to always take two, two steps forward and one step back or one step forward, two steps back. So I think, for instance, I mean, we could we could attach it to uh, to that. But I know in 2016, for instance, so in 2016, uh, you did have the elders who were ordained that, that spring. But you also had Mark Bruce and uh, the camp meeting that we had at the School of the Prophets in 2016. So Steve and I, and I were there as students. Heidi and I went back for the fall uh, for the camp meeting. I was a student in 2016, too. I know you were. Okay. <laughs> I'm just... just making sure people knew that. Yeah, so Heidi and I went back and... Uh, um, the cat meeting that we had there. So we ended up, they ended up putting in this, uh, the new building and, and it was, it was packed. I mean, it was an extremely successful camp meeting. All kinds of people had come to that camp meeting, but there was strife, the Midianites, that when we planted strife came in, and um, what, what ended up happening, it destroyed the increase of the earth. That's Judges 6, verse 4. Right? And this happened. Many of the people who came to that camp meeting who were interested in this message ended up getting chased out of the movement. I'm not going to go into details. but and, and part of it, there were some people there with some wrong ideas. But they were dealt with very harshly. Um, I was actually shocked on how people retreated there who had come to this camp meeting. And, and that's because there was strife going on. There were problems that were existing in the movement that uh, caused this sort of attitude. Now, of course, I'm not behind the scenes. I just see what's happening. Um, so, you know, maybe there's more to it than I, than I can see. But I don't think people should be treated in the way that I saw them being treated, who were interested in the message. There was no patience. There was no laboring or working. It was just, we don't want these people here. And, and, and so uh, the movement didn't grow. And this had been something that had actually been going on in the movement for a long time. People were interested in this message, but if they didn't, come up to whatever ideas that were, uh, you know, being held as the standard, uh, there wasn't the patient laboring with them. Um, so, so that's what happened. And so we look at this, this uh, period of darkness, this oppression that's happening. 
this is something that we we have within ourselves internally in this movement. So so we have to figure that out. And this is this is something that I mean we're looking back and we can talk about Parminder, but Parminder isn't really the cause of this because this happens before Parminder. And uh, we also saw in 2016 with Mark Bruce and um, uh, there was just lots of things going on. So I know that uh, Stephen and Heidi and I, uh, we went to Alabama um, because there was this need there and, and Michael, uh, because there was this need there in Alabama to uh, to accept some of the things that Jeff had accepted regarding chronology. And so uh, we presented there uh, on, on chronology, dealing with the periods of 70 years. And, um, but some of the leadership from Alabama wasn't there. And after we had been there, people have seemed to accept what we had presented. But because they were being, uh, they were followers of Mark Bruce, uh, after we had been there, uh, there was a work done to undermine what we had presented. And then um, after the camp meeting in 2016, uh, there was some of the brothers from Alabama went there as students. We talked to them just before we left. And uh, they ended up being kicked out of the, the school, uh, I think in December or something like that in 2016. So might have been January. But <clears throat> anyway, there was this, these conflicts, all this strife going on. We don't know all the stories. If, if we talked to people who were there, they would tell us and justify why they, somebody was treated this way or what was happening. But we know the reality of humanity. We do not know everything. And we often act as if we do. We know what's going on in a person's heart. And that's what we think, but we don't. And so this is something that um, creates strife. It's the, the evil surmising, the gossip. All of these things were going on in this movement. And, you know, so they're going on before really have nothing to do with Parminder in that sense. But Parminder carries this on and develops it. And, and to some degree, he used this spirit that existed within the movement to turn people against each other. So he, he knew uh, the people that were going to be a problem for him. He could easily use this, um, this sort of spirit that existed uh, to, to get them out of the way. And he did that with Chawatu. And to some degree with Mark Bruce as well, by uh, the fact that we all have um, problems, you can magnify the problems in that person, but not be redemptive in how you deal with them. So this is the Midianite oppression. This is the strife. This is what the story of Gideon begins with, and that means if this is the darkness what is the light what is the first message addressing so so when we place the message here in in the story of Gideon, we have this darkness. So we could look at this darkness. There's a darkness that exists in our line, right, before 1989. And there's a darkness in this message before 9-11. But we're saying that this story of Gideon is a zoom into 11-9. That's November 9th, 2019. And... The lines that we're going to have, Jer Jerubal and Gideon, both are going to go from November 9th to December 25th, 2021. So they're going to comprise that 777 days. 
That's going to be the reform line for both of them. And that means that 9-11 is, or 11-9, pardon me, 11-9, is, is um, a message that is meant to address this problem in this movement. So we know that the story of dealing with Parminder was the message of, of Deborah and Barak. So Sisera represents Parminder's message. And we can see that in order for, um, because when we look at, at Deborah and Barak, that's the formalization of a message. So now the story of Gideon is this chronology that's been given to us, that's gonna, this 777 days, that is the empowerment of the message on the judge's line, right? So Gideon is the empowerment of the first message. But within it itself, this empowerment comes by addressing this darkness, right? So, so if we look at the line here uh, that we have, this uh, judge's line, you can see we have Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar was this message from September 11th um, that... We looked at each of them as an individual line, uh, but they also had a line off the Ehud and Shamgar. And these are going to be addressing what specific darkness. So we have a darkness that's prior to 9-11. What is that darkness? On the judge's line. I'm, I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? I was slightly distracted. So on the judge's line, what's the period of darkness prior to... 9-11. That's going to be the reform line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar is going to address that darkness. What is that darkness? Um, um, Islam? Uh, the, the, what they play in, in uh, the Bible, the scriptures, what it means? I, 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 something else? So prior to 9-11, because this is about this movement from 9-11 to 2023. So the period of darkness there had to do with our understanding of time. Right. Interesting. Time, right. So it's time. And that's what we address. Now, initially, the first message there is going to be uh, this need for the Holy Spirit. Right. To bring this light. Because in a sense, that darkness is Adventist darkness. But it's Adventist darkness in relationship to understanding time. That is no time setting. Right? Nothing to do with time. The Sunday law is just going to pop up one morning. You'll open up the paper and you'll see that there's a Sunday law. And then at that moment, you're going to make your decision. Are you going to stand for the Sabbath or not? Right? That's how most Adventists would have looked at it. And if you look at, at Jeff's message prior to 9-11, he's just looking for the Sunday law to come. So he's watching for the Sunday law, which most Adventists aren't, but lots are conservative Adventists. But they're not aware of, of what that entails. And so Jeff starts to understand that we're repeating Millerite history. But 9-11 catches all of us off guard and then we have to evaluate that. And so that message of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar is going to address that understanding of prophecy. But the basic understanding of prophecy here is not so much that we can know what's going to happen, but so that we can be prepared for what's going to happen. And that preparation is what has to happen inside of us. Right. So we have to know and understand who we really are sinners and know Christ so that we can depend upon him fully, that we can trust him in spite of what we see in ourselves and in spite of what we see happening around us. So, so that we can be prepared for the Sunday law. And then we have though, so we have this message, this movement, but within this movement, during this increase of knowledge, 
we end up with this uh, counterfeit message arising that has to be addressed. And this is going to be Parminder's message. And so the message of Deborah and Barak, which is the formalization of this message, helps us to understand what that message of 9-11 is about. But we have a group within this movement, Parminder's group, that actually even rejects the idea of the Sunday law. So in the story of Deborah and Barack, when we get to September 7th, 2019, Jeff is going to um, awaken from that, that period. We're going to have the Battle of Baal Peor, and, or the conflict of Baal Peor, and um, the rebellion, I guess it is. And Deborah and Barack, their message is going to conquer that message of Parminder. Right. And then we had the song of Deborah and Brack, and we saw how that that worked and how that that brought us to the present time. Because we're repeating that history. But then we get to 11.9. So the story of Gideon is the empowerment of the first angel. And so this is going to be this message of time in which this movement is being tested. And if we understand it, in, in, in some ways, we know that this, this message parallels uh, Samuel Snow's message. Now, Samuel Snow's message happens after um, August 11th, 1840, and before um, October 22nd, 1844. So, so that's going to be addressed, but it's going to be addressed more in the story of jo Jotham right? One of the sons of Gideon. But here in this story of Gideon, it's going to be addressing this prediction, July 18, 2020. But it's going to be begin as a reform line at 11.9 and go to December 25th, 2021 as a reform line. But we know that when we look at the judges line above, November 9th is the first angel empowered, and December 25th is the second angel empowered, right, in that line of the judges above. But we understand how this works, right? We understand that when you zoom into a reform, a waymark on a reform line, and you create a reform line, it can contain the other waymarks, but they serve a different purpose in the bigger reform line, the reform line above, than they do in the reform line created by that waymark. So that means all through this line of the judges, uh, we have reform lines, right? And each of these reform lines is addressing a sp particular period of darkness because darkness exists all the way through a reform line. Um, but in this case, this is November 9th. So November 9th, um, which is the story of Gideon, is not, is not so much about Parminder, even though it's going to deal with that, that darkness, certain aspects of Parminder, but they're going to exist all through these lines, right? Parminder's darkness is going to exist because it exists in the movement. And, and Parminder didn't create this darkness. He just happens to be uh, somebody presenting this, this darkness. Okay, so hopefully that gets us into the context of what we're addressing here. We're addressing something within the movement. And in order for this first message on the judges line to be empowered, this movement has to go through a reform line that we mark here as the, the reform line of Gideon. So... So that's what the, the Midianite reform line or Gideon's reform line is addressing. So the Midianite oppression, if we go back to the scriptures here. So they're going to uh, sow, right? So they're going to sow this seed. But strife is going to come in. 
and also the Amalekites and the children of the east. So the Midianites mean strife, right? The Amalekites, the sons of Amalek, the people of Lapping. Uh, what, what's Lapping? What does it mean, the people of Lapping? Is that lapping like a dog? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what it means. Right? That's what I would understand it to mean. So, um, and this is kind of interesting, interesting in the story of Gideon, because you're going to have some who um, are going to lap like a dog, and some who bring the water up to their mouth, right, when he separates them. Does that make sense? Well, I understand the example. I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to to factor through the rest of what it could mean because <clears throat> being like a dog is not a compliment. No, I know. I, I recognize that. Um, but these are these are the enemies. So if we're going to take it and characterize uh, what the Amalekites would be, uh, why why did some lap? Why did they put their mouth down to the water? And why did others bring the water up to their mouth with their hands? Um, my perspective as a warrior uh, would be to uh, keep their eyes on the target. Right. So they're being watchful, right? The others are being careless. And so there is a carelessness uh, that this movement has. Well, <clears throat> I'm having to look at it a little differently. Okay. Well, yeah. How do you look at it? Well, has there not been a, a push with Parmenderin tests that more relevance needs to be given to the LGBTQ community within the church? Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I don't think that that's what this is referring to, though. Okay. Context here. Because, again, this isn't really dealing with Parminder. This is dealing with something that's in this movement presently, right? After we get rid of Parminder's message. So the people who end up after November 9th, we're, we're not accepting the message of Parminder as far as those... Uh, liberal ideas but there is a lack of watch watchfulness now we know the children of the east we can look at this as a symbol of islam and especially when you look at um uh what what we we see as we read these verses right they encamped against them destroyed the increase of the earth Till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their, their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. So they're coming like grasshoppers or locusts devouring the land, right? Now, when we look at Islam as a symbol, we just think of Islam as this enemy outside, which, which it is. But in the context of this movement, um, because of this strife, we actually are experiencing what Islam symbolizes, if that makes sense. That is, it's destroying this movement. So we're not aware of what that enemy is because we're focused on this enemy outside instead of the enemy within, within our own hearts. And so we can see also, I mean, if, if we look at the situation of the movement after November 9th, also we had all these people leave. And so they were in a sense consumed all of this seed that was sown is now we have almost no one left in the movement. The vast majority of the movement has, has left. And 
In verse 6, Israel is greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Now it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house, house of bondage. Now that's going to be Jeff. So Jeff rises up. He's this prophet, right? His message. Is this message about what that November 9th that Parminder and Tess predicted is not going to be fulfilled? And he's also talking about July 18, 2020. <clears throat> right. So Jeff is presenting this message that we can, and he's also done this message in the past. So we can look at it as a message that has happened, that they're going to be delivered. Right. And then we have the call of Gideon. So the call of Gideon, again, is a message. Gideon is a message. And when we look at this, there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Oprah. Right. And in verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Gideon. Right. So we could look at this and we could say, well, there are symbols here of 9-11. For instance, Judges 6-11 if you, uh, you know, flipped it upside down and and put it in a, in a mirror, you would get 9-11, right? So we can mark right, this. Right. Yeah, we could mark this as 9-11. We could all, or 11-9, or I guess, is if we did it, if we did it in a mirror. So if we flipped it upside down, it would be, you know, 9-11, and if we put it in a mirror, then, like, from left to right, it would be 9-11, or 11-9, pardon me, right? 11-9, bro. Right. So we can see that 9-11 and 11-9 are the same way, Mark. But in this context of this law... we so choose to use it. What's that? As long as we choose to use it, right? Okay. So and, we can... and, and we have. Uh, it's just a statement that's all okay yeah so we're, we're saying that this is 11 9 we need to know that we're in this we're in this repeat of history right that when we have a way mark such as as 9 11 we have two 11 nines right 30 years apart we have a 9 11 and we know that they they can represent the same thing and that that this whole line of the judges is a zoom in to the arrival of the second angel on the line where 9-11 is the second angel arriving. So this, this whole line really is about 9-11, and 9-11 is the beginning of the Sunday law on that line of Jeff's, you know, where we have 9-11, midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law. And so here we can see that it's it's addressing that history but specifically this is talking about the message at november 9th so at november 9th this message this movement is presented with a message regarding july 18th now it also we have the 273 and there's other things that are lined show us that this movement is light that this movement is receiving that is going to test it and so that whole line from 9 11 to december 25th or from 11 9 to december 25th 2021 so that 777 days is meant to address this strife that exists within this movement this conflict so one of the things we saw when we went through this before is that god is leading us to the upper room, right? He's leading us to recognize the sin that exists in our lives, our lives personally. And uh, the problems that we have with others that need to be resolved. Now, so when Gideon is called, he's threshing wheat by the wine press, right? So the idea of wheat, that this is doctrine, right? But the threshing of wheat, this is the studying of the scriptures. That's a thorough study of the scriptures. 
and he's by the wine press. So he's not in the threshing floor. He's by the wine press. So obviously this is not at the time when you're pressing wine because this is in the time of harvest. And he's hiding this from the Midianites. So he's hiding it from this strife or conflict. Now, when we look at this message of July 18th, the message of July 18th had begun in 2018. It was accepted by Jeff initially, and then it was rejected by Tess. And so that message, in a sense, went underground. Um, me and Stephen and Odilio and others were still studying this. Um, and Jeff is going to revive this message. But this message had, in a sense, been hidden, right? Most people in the movement didn't really know much about it. So this angel of the Lord appears unto Gideon. So this is this message regarding July 18th. And uh, we went through and showed that um, all of these things that are good, that, that are being talked about, we, we drew them on a line. So let's go there. So we drew them on a line and it's here what we call the line for, for chapter six. So in chapter six, we can see that this line, it's going to, it's going to have this November 9th, 1989 and the September 11th, 2001. And we're going to use Judges 611 to illustrate November 9th. And here, I'm just going to do something just to show you what I mean. Um, just going to do something here to see if this works. If I take 611, this will occur. What happens if I do this? Does this work here? 611, this doesn't really work, does it? No, it doesn't work when I do it this way. I'd have to do this. Just excuse me here. Let me do it like this. So if I do it like this, does this flip over? Okay. Okay, can you kind of see how that changes into 11.9? Right, so what I did is I took, there it is, upside down, though it's a backwards nine. Inverted. That's, That's good. Yeah, inverted. 6.11 there, and then I go like this, there you get 11.9. Just wanted to show you that. Anyway. Hey, that's a cool feature, bro. I like that one. Yeah, that's I have to do it as a show me how to do it. I just I just uh copied 611 as a text and then I posted it as a picture. And then you just grab the corner and you flip it. Oh so it's an automatic thing when you drop it down. Oh, flip turn it over from corner yeah. uh, bottom yeah. right to top left, right? Yeah. Is that what you're but saying? It, but it only works with the picture. If you use a text, it doesn't do that. Oh, very good to know. Picture, symbol. Whoa. Okay. So um, so anyway, we have this 611. And when we drew this line, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have the the formalization of that message is going to be this uh, publication of the warning to Nashville. And that makes sense that that's a formalization. And then we have an empowerment and we're gonna take that as Judges 627. And this is going to be that 1260 days <coughs> from um, January 14th, uh, 2017. 
right? So the 1260 days, and then you have another 273 days uh, to March 27th, um, 2021, but which makes 1533 days, but we don't have that drawn in there. And, and we somehow have to figure that, you know, put this in or fit this in some way to these lines. Uh, but the idea here is that this is Daniel chapter 10, where Daniel is uh, praying and fasting for three weeks, right? And now it's going to be at the end of that three weeks, that's July 18th, right? So that's the 21 days, um, that this other message arrives. So we, we put this as an empowerment, but nothing particular happens there other than that we recognize it. And, um, and I can't remember if it's on that day or just before that, that we recognize the 1260 days. I think I recognized it earlier. And then I, I pointed out that we have this June 27th symbol. And in that period of time, uh, we're spiritually fasting. That is, you know, not literally fasting. Um, and we're waiting for this fulfillment. And so July 18th is going to be Christ coming to um, Daniel. And we can see that that's the second angel arriving. Right. So that's what happens on July 18th. The second angel arrives and we get this answer that we're fasting and praying about. Now, that answer is that the event of July 18th that we expect didn't occur. But we have an answer. We know why it didn't occur. That is Hiram Edson's in the cornfield receiving a vision. Now, we know that. Larry Lesher didn't accept that, right? Because he didn't understand Millerite history. So he expected that the whole movement would just have accepted whatever um, was presented. Um, but we know that Hiram Edson's message wasn't even generally known about until 1905. So his vision was not uh, common knowledge. The whites would have known of it and a few others, some of his friends, but it wasn't something that was commonly known. Joseph Bates would have known about it. And, and Hiram Metzen didn't write it out until 1868. Um, and, and then that was never published. And so uh, Loughborough, when he gives this account of Hiram Metzen's vision, is a little bit distorted from what Hiram Metzen says. So if you look at Hiram Metzen's account that he wrote out, what we have left of it, it's quite a bit different than Loughborough's account. But Loughborough's um, just going by what he remembered that he was told and other people had told him. So the story gets a little bit filtered by the time it gets published in 1905. And, and so we don't actually, most people, when they, hear, when they think about the story, they mostly know Loughborough's account, not Hiram Metzen's account. But anyway, um, we're saying that that is um, that is the parallel Hiram Edson's vision and and what was presented on July nineteenth, so July eighteenth and nineteenth. So that's that disappointment there. So we have it as a disappointment in this line. It's the second angel arriving in different lines. July 18th would be different waymarks. And we're going to see, in a sense, uh, chapter 7, or, or chapter 8, pardon me. Chapter 8 is going to be this history from July 19th to January 11th, 2023. So even though we have this line of Gideon, we can take this uh, from chapter 7, 19, that's July 19th. It will, will take us to the Judges 8.22, and that would be this history. So you can see that this is a zoom into these waymarks here, probably July 18th, even though it doesn't have July 18th in it, or maybe January 11th, 2022. Right. So chapter 8, which is mostly chapter 8, but that one verse from Judges 17, 
And then we can see in Judges, uh, or Judges 7, verse 19. And then we see Judges chapter 7, that this is going to start in Judges 6, September 7th, 2019. And you're going to see that this actually goes back and zooms into probably November 9th. So when we look at these lines, when you look at these chapters, we can see we have multiple lines addressing different points. And, and how we derive those what was by looking at the symbols in those lines. So when we deal with the fleece in Judges chapter 6, we're going to see that this, this fleece is this um, this uh, March 7th, 2021. That's going to be when we start examining the foundation. Any other significance of March 7th? Yeah. So, so 321, that is March 7th in 321 is the first Sunday law. And how many years from March 7th 321 to March 7th, 2021. 1700. Yeah, so 1700 years. So you got these the 1700 years. Now, what's the 17 as a symbol? It's the seventh prime number. Right, Rand says. We know it relates to the story of Joseph. Right, so Joseph is 17 when he has his two dreams and then is sold uh, to the Ishmaelites, ends up in Egypt, right? And Anything else about 17? I, I don't have but uh, two things for it so far. What Other you than... Um, I actually used one and seven together a couple of days ago, and it was a combination of uh, Miller Rule number one and Miller Rule number seven. Uh, when I was discussing something with somebody, that that actually came up. Okay. Um. Yeah. So. I mean, this may be a bit obscure, but remember uh, the significance of my birthday. So on my 52nd birthday, I turned 52 on my 52nd it's birthday. It's not obscure. It, it's totally remembered, but um, now that part is not, not well for me. Yeah. So, but I also turned 17 in 1980 and 187 days later, I'm converted. So we need to, I need to put all these extra notes inside of here. Thank you very much for explaining these things. This is for the, uh, the notes. Yeah. So, so Joseph is 17 and 11 years later is the dream of the butler and the baker, right? And 11 times 17 is 187. Right. So you can see that, that parallel there, that symbolism there. Okay, so there's this, uh, um, and, and it's going to be on a birthday, by the way, that the, the dreams of the butler and baker are fulfilled, Pharaoh's birthday. Um, so you have a symbol there of a birthday, and, um, and of course, Joseph's turned 17. Whether it's his 17th birthday that he gets the coat of many colors or not, I don't know. Um but we can see there the symbolism relating to 17. 
that it's related to these lines and this understanding. Um, okay, um, I'm just looking at something here. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Going on. I'm sorry about this, but I'll forget about it if I don't look at this now. Okay. Okay. So, so we got these. We can we can see how these lines are working out. That we don't. And see what we didn't do is we didn't say well we didn't define these lines. We didn't say this is the period of darkness. Uh, and you know this is the first angel arriving. Uh, we didn't do that with with this chapter, chapter seven. Right. Um, now we could have, but we didn't, and so I'm not sure particularly if we need to, because when we looked at these waymarks, we could see their significance. Um, so. So I don't know. I don't know how to do this particularly, um, and probably that's why we didn't do it. Um, that's why we went to instead. We went to um, these uh, these lines, right? So these lines are going to take some of those way marks and place them in this context. So I don't know. Should we should we try to mark each of these as as a separate line with the way marks? Okay. So we can. Should we? <clears throat> okay. Well, let, let's try it. So if we're going to take this as a line. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sitting in the back calculate. What's up? What'd you say? We're, I'm asking whether we should mark the way marks on this line and complete Judges chapter 7 as a line. I would go forward. Let's do it. Okay. So what we did is we took September 7th, 2019. This is the call. So in Judges chapter 6, verse 33 to 35, uh, I'll, I'll just read it. I won't change the screen there. Uh, we took this... Um, and all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and Abiezer was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and unto Naphtali. And they came up to meet them. So there is this conflict that's going on. And so we're going to reach back and take this as representing the conflict that's happening with Parminder. So we mark it as September 7th. And so the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. So this is the message of Gideon. This is the message of July 18th. And he blew a trumpet. And Abbe Ezer, that is the father of help, was gathered after him. So if we think about the message of July 18th, the message of July 18th had been, had been attacked. That is, it was initially accepted by Jeff. He even has people presenting on it. He, he's not going to have, have me present on it um, after I did my initial presentation. He goes away to uh, Brazil. When he comes back, he's now basically told that he can't accept this message of July 18th and that, you know, Theodore is a problem. Uh, we really don't want him speaking or doing anything. Um, and, and it takes time for Jeff to 
to finally accept all of this. All right, so it's not going to be until December that he writes a letter to all the elders suggesting that I not be a teacher in the movement. All right, so this is going to happen in December of 2018. Um, and it's going to be in November that Jeff goes away. So, so it takes a few weeks for this to happen. Um, now, uh, so we have this, this conflict on September 7th. And on September 7th, 2019, the father of help is going to come and help this message of Gideon, right? So when Jeff wakes up on September 7th and he recognizes what's happened with Parminder's movement, he's now going to begin to revive the message of July 18th, right? Because on August 29th, Stephen, John, Mark, and Odilio are brought before this tribunal, this papal tribunal, and told to recant of this message of July 18. Right. So Jeff knows about this, right? He he knows about what's going on, and he's going to revive this message of July 18. But there still is resistance within the movement to July 18. For instance, now that Parminder's out of the way with his November 9th date, Jeff has all of these people who had been in the movement, and some of them were still in the movement, telling him, you need to abandon time setting, right? Any type of time setting. We, we just, you know, don't pick up this July 18 message. But Jeff continues. Well, that was what the spirit was at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Jeff persists, right? When we get to November 9th, he has Stephen and Odilio have been there in Arkansas for a while. And then I come on on the 7th and I leave on the 11th. But on November 9th, I'm going to present the 273 in the Mayan calendar. Um, and then on November 10th, uh, they're going to have meetings where uh, Bronwyn and uh, Clayton basically are, are trying to discredit me because they're looking at the November 22nd, 2018 presentation. Now, Jeff hears this and he accepts the basic logic of, of what we had done back in 2018. And that was one of the, the main things that had led to the letter where Jeff said I shouldn't be a teacher in the movement because everything that I was doing was being misrepresented to, to other people through other people to Jeff. So, so Jeff looks at this again and he says, well, this is, there's nothing wrong with this. What, what Theodore presented was fine. Right. Is that what you got from it, Stephen? When we had those meetings on November 10th. Um, yeah, he was, um, he wasn't threatened by it or anything. He was, yeah. Now he thinks that I came to a wrong conclusion about what was how it was fulfilled, but but the whole logic of what we were looking at, and that of course was my point. My point was our lines point to this date. Can we predict what's going to happen on that date? And even looking back, we have a different opinion about how it's fulfilled. So, so the purpose of that study was to know that we can't set dates. We can't set events to be fulfilled on specific dates. And that even after we, we have a date and we have an event, we may not understand the significance of it for a while. So that's what I understand about uh, that meeting. Now here we have some symbols. So Judges, uh, we get to Judges chapter seven, verse three. So seven verse three says, now therefore go proclaim in the ears of the people saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from the Mount Gilead, and there return of the people, and there returned of the people, 20 and 2,000, and there remain 10,000. So here we have, um, so we would say that this is the time of the end, right? Judges 6, verse 33 to 35. Um, and then we have November 9th is going to be this 7, verse 3. And that's where you're going to have 32,000 and 22,000 leave, right? They return. Okay. 
They're just not interested in this battle. And we can see how that parallels with um, what happened on November 9th in connection with November 9th. Now, if we are to uh, create this as a line, so what we have to do is we're just going to borrow this. So this is going to be the first angel arriving. Okay. Now, if the first angel arrives on September 7th, because of this call, this, this call is going to be for the message of Gideon, right? It's going to be formalized on November 9th. But what is the darkness then that, that this first angel is addressing? And, and think about this formalization. So you're going to have this formalization. And then you're going to have its empowerment. So what exactly is happening here with these? Because you have a call of Gideon, right? And, um, well, it's not just the call of Gideon. Gideon's making a call, right? It's chapter six. <clears throat> so he makes a call. He blows a trumpet, right? He's helped by the father of help. Ibi Ebi Ezer's gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and unto Naphtali. And they came up to meet him. So, so this is the call. This is the gathering of the 32,000, right? He makes a call, 32,000 arrives. So we can see how the one leads to this formalization. You make a call and you have all of these people join you, right? Sorry, boss. Uh, Flyswatter. I. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, Theodore. Um, uh, yeah. I'm still in the back. Don't run in calculations. Okay. Well, how about not do those now? Pardon me, sir. No. Well, how about not doing those now? Um. Hmm. Can't take that advice right now, sir. Well, you can do them later when you watch the video again. Um, and, and vice versa. Vice versa. I'm sorry, I'm done. Okay. Okay. So, so we have this call. We have these people get gathered, and then he's going to, in a formalization, he's going to separate out some of the people, right? And then he's going to separate out more again with the empowerment. So, so what is, if this is the message, what is the darkness of this line? Of, of, and especially with this first angel, this message, how would we address the, the darkness and what the message is? Because, I mean, it's about July 18, we know, but we don't normally have this separating with each of these waymarks. 
in this way. Do people understand what I'm asking? Sort of. Trying to find the darkness in there, right? Yeah. So to define the darkness, because look at the message itself, right? In order to understand what the message is, we need to understand it in relation to the darkness. And since the first angel's message here is a call, what particularly is being addressed and what's addressed is the darkness. So what is the darkness? Well, if we don't know what the darkness is, I don't know how we can draw this line. Okay, let's think about it again. So we have a call. And then the formalization is going to be a separation of the 32,000 who come to that call, 22,000 are going to be sent back. So that is, they're going to be sent back to where? Where are they going to be restored to? Don't they go back to camp? Okay, well, so where's the camp? So they go back some, They go back to their homes, actually, right? So they come to this call to go to this battle, but 22,000 of this 32,000 say, now I, I'm not, I'm either too frightened or I have other things to do, other things better to do. So they're going to, to go back home, okay? Then we have 10,000. Now the 10,000, they're not gonna be involved in this battle initially, but they are gonna be involved in the battle afterwards, right? So 300 of those 10,000 are going to be called specifically to go and battle this battle, right? This is turning into a math problem, huh? Uh, it's not really a math problem. Uh, so it's not problem, it's just light. Wouldn't it be like a, from a, Okay, William, what are you saying? He must have been down in a valley or something. No, is it, is it before July... 18, 20, 20. Or is it the call that you made to um to the other group to um join them? It can't be. Okay. So so here we have this call. So this call is a message that comes at the time of it at the end. Right? That is at the end of the 329 days, which is going to have 329 days after, after October 13, 2018. Right? And so this is a call. And so who's being called?
the Levite, thank you. Well, it can't be the Levites because this is in this movement. And so that would be the priest. Okay, well. So it's it's calling people in this movement. We'll just say that, right? Okay, that's a, it, 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 and so the priests are a symbol, symboli, symbology of this movement. Right. This movement is the priests. So so it's a call to the priests, and and this is prior to November 9th, two thousand nineteen. So so Jeff is making this call, so to speak. But, I mean, it's not just Jeff, because this is not about a person. This is about a message. So this message is making a call. And that's the message of July 18th that makes this call. And then we get to November 9th. So many people are happy with Jeff that, you know, he's rejected Parminder. Right? But when we get to November 9th, we're going to have a lot of people not interested in this. So those who would vaunt themselves, who were fearful or weren't watchful are sifted out after being tested by the water message. They're judged according to the response of the call, right? So, so some people are interested. They want to support Jeff. But when they get to November 9th, there's this, uh, you know, meeting that we have there. Um, people gather around November 9th. But you're still going to have only 10,000 people who are going to, uh, in, you know, in this number symbolically, uh, that are going to be interested in being involved in this battle. 22,000 return wherever they came from. They're restored because 22 and 220 is a symbol of rest, restoration. So they're going to be restored back to where they came from. It could be the church, whatever, right? So now you have this 10,000 in this formalization. And then you have the empowerment. And the empowerment, we're saying, is this Nashville uh, publication, the warning, June 21st and 22nd. That's there on this line. That is, the 300 are, are involved in this um, publication of this message. That's, that, that is, they're going to be the watchmen on the walls of Zion. They're going to warn... Nashville. So you have 300 left. Now, then we have July 10th and 11th, 2020, and that's Judges 10 and 11. Now, we know July 10th, that's the 10th day of the seventh month. So why did we have July 10th and 11th? 2020. So if we look at Judges chapter 7, so let's go there. Verse 10 and 11. But if thou fear to go down, go down with Pura, thy servant down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then the, he went down and Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Okay, so we have July 10th and July 11th. So what are these? And, and if we say that this is the second angel arriving, um, what is our basis for that? What is the message? Oops. Okay, so we've got the second angel arriving. We're saying that's July 10th. 11th and this judges verse 10 and 11. Well, um, July 11 was Jeff's last presentation. Yeah, so it's it's the last presentation that Jeff makes 
before July 18th. And July 10th, it's obviously the day before, but the symbol of that is we had, it's the 10th day of the seventh month, but in the presentation that I made on November 9th, 2019, using the Mayan calendar, we counted 273 days on either side of that. That is, that's the, the number that I came up with. The date that I came up with was July 10th. So not everybody's going to remember this. And Jeff accepted this one. So um, it's gonna be here. Um, So when I did a calculation using the Mayan calendar, I'm not going to go through that calculation, to try to see if I could uh, produce from that 391 days and from the Mayan calendar, the 14,000. So the 391 years is 142,810 days. Well, it's actually um, less than that, but, but close enough. It's... 142,809 days and 22 hours. So it's like two hours short. But anyway, we, we won't look at that. <laughs> but when I took this and I did this calculation, I did this calculation with the 144,000 days, I ended up coming to October 11th, 2019. And with the other way that I did it, it was April 9th, uh, 2021. Now, the center of those two dates is July 10th, 2020. It's 273 days from October 11th, 2019 to July 18, 2020. And it's 273 days from July 10th, 2020. Did I say July 18th? July 10th, 2020 to April 9th, 2021. So the 273, that's what I presented on November 9th. I presented this calculation. So November 9th, I present this July 10th date. That's eight days before July 18th. Okay. So, so this July 10th date we already had as a way mark. So we tied it together with Jeff's last presentation on July 11th. That's what we did. So this is this, this date here. And we're saying that, that this second angel arrives then. Now the question is, what is the message that arrives on July 10th and 11th? Because we have this, it's about the Midianites, right? It's about this strife. But specifically here, when we have this call, so we still haven't really defined what this darkness is. So we have the call, we have this formalization and empowerment. And, and we're saying that these are the first message. And then we're going to have a second message arrive. And it will relate to the first message. But we still haven't defined what the darkness is. So I don't know if we really even understand what these messages are until we can define the darkness. Yeah, I can't even think of what the darkness would be right now. Okay, but if we think about a call and we think about the people that come, the darkness has to relate to something within the movement. Now, what we can say is that the Maybe. movement prior to September 7th, the movement was working towards this type of organizational structure, Right. It had the doctrinal analysis group that was supposed to analyze papers. It had Parminder as the leader of the movement, right? So Parminder's the leader of the movement prior to September 7th, technically, not really in reality, but in sort of a, an official way, Jeff is supposed to be dead, right? But Jeff wakes up, he's resurrected, so to speak, 
on September 7th, 2019. But also what happens is the message of July 18th is going to make this call, right? There's going to be increase of knowledge about it. But Jeff, Jeff knows already on September 7th that when he's rejected Parminder's message, he has to look at what Parminder had censured Okay, so the darkness is this rejection of July 18. Does that make sense? That would seem to seem to fit so far. And so, so, but this message of July 18th is going to make a call to examine this, right? So we're we're going to uh, yes. look at this. Okay, so we're going to look at July 18 now. And then this call goes out, and we have we have this movement gathered around this July 18th, but not everybody wants that, right? They're telling Jeff, no, no, no more time said. But Jeff continues, right? And then he publishes the Nashville warning. That's the empowerment of it. But we can see that not everybody supported this Nashville publication. Right, A lot of people are a little bit ashamed about the publication. They didn't think Jeff should have done it. He shouldn't have made the warning to Nashville. Right, So now you have the 300 symbolically represented here that are going to be involved in what happens next. Now, Jeff does his last presentation on July 11th. Now, on July 10th, um, and I don't remember specifically. Um, but on July 10 in 2020, I presented um, I presented that Friday night. And we did questions. So there was all these questions that were uh, being asked and and being answered. I don't know how much people actually asked questions, but I tried to answer whatever questions I could. Um, if I go here, just hang on. And I think what I'm mostly addressing here, uh, we actually go through a lot of stuff dealing with Samuel Snow's letters. So I'm just looking at the video here, what I drew on the board. Um, I address the Civil War. Um, and we deal with uh, the number of days from July 4th to July 18, so that 18,720 minutes. Um, so we address that, and we go to the Civil War and the parallels there with the 13 days from the Battle of Manassas uh, to Ellen White's vision uh, regarding the Battle of Manassas. The Bat Battle of Manassas is July 21st, midnight, so we're addressing uh, what's coming up. So that's what I was addressing in these, in that period of time. We're addressing this. And I'm just looking at another picture here. Um, yeah, so we're going to go through, um, yeah, Samuel Snow's letters again and finish those off. So, so those were the questions that we had. So that's on July 10th. Now, so Jeff gives his his last message on July 11th. Um, maybe we could, before the study tomorrow, we can look at that and try to figure out what Jeff's message was. So a second angel must be arriving there. 
I like to watch that. Yeah. Watch watch his presentation. Yeah. We probably need to look at that. And then we have July 18th. So that's going to be a formalization of the message that arrives on July 10th. Is it possible to put a link into that for that uh, presentation if anybody has that? Um, we probably could if we have that. Um, Moran, have you got that? I'll see if I can find it. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so it would be. Yeah, I don't see it presently here. It would be the last of his Daniel's last visions. I might have it on a DVD. I think I have it on DVD. Yeah, so. I got all the DVDs for that. I just put a link in the chat. Yeah. Did they remove it? Yep. Yeah, so they removed that. Okay, so there's a link in the chat there. Okay. Yeah, so you have it on your site. Okay. So, yeah, we should probably look at what Jeff says there. Um, that should help us a little bit. So he says, just at the beginning, um, the last Sabbath, before a complete change takes place in this movement, in this message. Right. So I think that's part of his prayer. Uh, or maybe he's just talking. Uh, Please bless us now as we open your word. Yeah, so this is part of his prayer. So it just starts uh, with uh, the last Sabbath before a complete change takes place in this movement. So it'll be interesting to see what he says. Uh, it's interesting he says it's 10 after 11 here. Um, yeah, it's so we got that 10, 11 mentioned. Um, so, so anyway, that's, that's what we're marking there. So if we take a look at it, we should be able to see a bit more about this line. Okay. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Yeah. What's the, is that the last DVD? It's the last presentation he does on Daniel's last vision. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so it's it's uh, number 50. And the link is there in the, the chat. So if you click on the link, you'll it'll open up. It's it's on the a horizontal tree YouTube page. It's around YouTube page, so a horizontal tree. Okay. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here this morning and for the light that comes to our path as we open your word and study. And so I pray for each person to continue to study, to pray, to see their own need of you. We pray for your angels' care and protection that you can watch over us, that you can forgive us of our sins and that you can bless us and keep us throughout this day until we come together again to study your word. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.